Welcome to this tutorial presented by oraclecoach.com. This is Claire Rajan and in this video segment I'll be explaining the constructs that are available in PL SQL for iterative control. Iterative control statements fall under the category of PL SQL constructs and they are used in programs where a statement or a series of executable statements need to be done repeatedly over and over again for a certain number of times. In this tutorial, I'll be discussing the loop end loop construct. Suppose you were to display the word hello on the screen five times. One option would be to write within the body of the program five DBMS output line statements that will all output the same string which is hello on the screen. Although this is one option, it's not a very practical option. What if you had to display the word hello 100 times? What you want to pay attention to on this slide is the fact that the action that had to be done was to display the word hello and it had to be done multiple times. In programs where you need to perform a certain action or actions multiple times, you can use a PL SQL programming construct that is used for iterative control such as a loop construct. In PL SQL, we have three types of loop constructs. All of them are used to perform a series of actions repeatedly. There is the basic loop which begins with the word loop and ends with the words end space loop semicolon. The second is the while construct. The while construct is followed by a condition that must be true to enter the loop. The while loop is also terminated with an end loop. The third type of loop uh, statement is the for loop. The for loop also ends with the words end space loop. And you can use uh, one of these or some of them even interchangeably depending on your program. Now before we go about learning the loop end loop construct, it's very important for you to understand the concept of a counter. Let's return to our program where we had to display the word hello on the screen five times. A counter is a programmatic element that you as a programmer will have to create in the program that will perform the function of counting. The counter is simply a numeric variable that you will declare in the declaration section with an initial value. For a given value of the counter, the action will be performed. It becomes your job as the programmer to keep changing the value of the counter within a looping construct and stop execution of the loop when the counter reaches a specific final value. For each iteration of the loop, the action will be performed. On this slide is an explanation of what must be done as far as defining an initial value for the counter, modifying its value using an increment statement and stopping when the final value of the counter is reached. Say we create a variable called C1 that should behave as a counter. It might be a good idea to always initialize it to let's say a value 0 during declaration. The action that the program must perform is to display the word hello on the screen five times. Let's say the first value of C1 which is 1 and we display the word hello on the screen using a DBMS output line statement. You then use an increment statement that will increase the existing value of C1 by 1 so the new value of C1 will become 1. For this value of C1 we also display the word hello on the screen. Once again we use an increment statement to increase the existing value of C1 by 1 so C1 will become 2. For this value of C1, we once again display the word hello on the screen. We again use an increment statement to increase the existing value of C1 by 1, so C1 will become 3. For this value of C1, we display the word hello on the screen. Again, we use an increment statement to increase the existing value of C1 by 1, so C1 will become 4. 
For the value C1 equal to 4, we display the word hello on the screen. By now, the word hello has been displayed five times on the screen. We want to stop repeating the process of incrementing C1 and displaying hello on the screen. We can use the last value that was acquired by C1 to act as the terminator. That is, when C1 exceeds the value 4, we want to stop. From the previous slide, you would have gathered that there were two actions that had to be done repeatedly. One was the value of C1 had to keep increasing by 1 and also the word hello had to be displayed on the screen. When you have to perform a given statement or statements over and over again, you can use a loop construct. There are three types of loop constructs. In this video, I'll be discussing the first type of loop statement. Which, uh, whose syntax is on the slide. It begins with the word loop. This is followed by one or more executable statements. After you have finished identifying the statements that must be repeated again and again, you will close the loop construct with the words end space loop. An example is shown on the slide where you have the word loop followed by a DBMS output line statement displaying the word hello on the screen followed by a statement that increments the current value of C1 by 1. The loop closes with the word end loop. Now the problem with this loop structure is that it is an endless loop. The program does not know when to stop looping and you land up with a programmatic error. To handle a loop construct properly, you must identify a way to exit from the loop. This exit will be based on a condition becoming true. Look at the last syntax where within the loop end loop construct an exit when condition statement has been written. The condition can be any user defined condition that must be satisfied to break from the loop. On this slide is the program that you would write uh, to, to display the word hello on the screen five times. I'll read the program out to, to you. It begins with the word declare followed, followed by a variable called C1 being declared to be of number type. An initial value of zero has been assigned to C1. In the body of the program, which begins with the word loop, is a loop construct which has within it a DBMS output line statement that displays the word hello, which is then followed by an assignment statement C1 colon equal to C1 plus 1. This statement increments the current value of C1 by 1. This is followed by an exit statement, which is written as exit when C1 equal to 5. This exit is used to come out of the loop construct, which ends with the word end loop. The program then ends with the word end. An explanation of how the program will execute is also displayed on the slide. You can take a few minutes to read it so you can understand how the execution occurs. On this slide is a program for you to try. You may pause the video for a few minutes and attempt the program which is to write a PLSQL block that will display the word hello on the screen three times. You're expected to use a loop statement. There's a slight difference between this program and the one that I explained on the previous slide. You are expected to set the variable that will behave as, a, as the counter to an initial value of five. That is, five is the first value that the counter will take. Think of what you must do to ensure that with an initial value of 5, the program will still have to display the word hello three times. On this slide is the solution to the program that you were expected to, to, to try. The variable C1 is uh, declared to be a numeric variable with an initial value of 5. In the body of the program is the loop statement that displays the word hello as well as increments C1 by 1. Now the difference between this program and the one that I explained earlier is that for hello to display three times, exiting the loop must be done after C1 reaches the value 8. 
what this program is trying to do is to is to bring to your attention the, the fact that the initial value of the counter did not have to be zero it could have been any value of your choice what you would have had to do is to ensure that the final value that you write in the exit condition should be a value that is based on the number of times the loop must execute In this tutorial, I explained the loop end loop statement. The loop statement is an iterative control statement that allows you to perform a series of executable statements repeatedly without coding them over and over again. I hope you find this tutorial useful. For other videos, tutorials and articles, you can take a look at the oraclecoach.com website. Thank you for your time and thank you for listening.